Production. This podcast could potentially have adult language, adult themes, definitely drinking, and possibly the possibility of sexual content. <clears throat> Listener discretion is advised. Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. I am your host, Erica Lance. I almost forgot what I was saying right there, too. Hopefully nobody noticed it, but I did announce it out loud. Okay, my co-host today is the amazing J.M. Paquette, and our guest today is C.K. Westbrook. Woo! 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 Okay, let's talk about what we're drinking. So um, I maybe drink this too fast, probably not, because I don't judge myself. Um, I have orange no grapefruit juice and gin which was not a great combination you know what I think it is I didn't use like my bathtub gin and I have bathtub gin I use not really in a bathtub but it's called bathtub gin but I used a botanical gin and I think that's where I went wrong on this is I think it needs like a cucumber limey type thing and not a grapefruit juice like it probably could have been okay with like a little grapefruit garnish a little, you know, a little something, but not, not a bunch of, anyway, that's what's happening in that cup. Anyway. Okay. Um, Jam, what are you drinking? I'm, I'm drinking orange Pico tea in my, in my moon and sun mug. You know, I think we should remind the audience why that is the case. Oh, cause I'm allergic to all the fun things in life. I'm allergic to alcohol and UV light. Yeah. She's a vampire without any perk at all perks none of the fun stuff yeah but i'm and the good designated driver yeah I used to be able to drink just yeah. not for 10 years now right 11 years 15, 12 it's been a while it's more than that but it's fine it's fine we all need a designated driver ck what are you drinking i am drinking a fine pinot noir and i the only things i drink now are pinot noir well i drink red wine but pinot noir is my favorite and single malt scotch because I've convinced myself that they are both healthier than all the other alcohols. And as I age, I have to worry about my health. So I drink scotch and wine on a regular basis. And that breaks my heart because those are my two favorite things, Jen. Alcohol and UV. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't have either of them. But what's, what's really interesting is the she used to drink. We used to go out dancing it and drinking. It used to be fun. Yeah, she used to be fun. Um, and then it progressed. and. It, she couldn't do it anymore uh, we were out one night doing shots and I was like my tongue is really fat in my mouth this is bad yeah so. and your throat was all red it was it was unpleasant um those were cherry bombs in case anyone wants to catch up with the rest of us which is just an it, unhealthy beverage anyway it be, which is it had to be um, like 2005 or something because that's when okay don't put the year on it um <laughs> it's cherry vodka dropped into an energy drink it was Red, Red Bull. Bull, Red Bull, right? Yeah, they were yeah. good. I just started like, yeah, I have an epi pen. And what about ball. five or six years later, you went outside and burst into yeah. flames or yeah. something? I, I, I broke out in hives. I was like, what is going on? What did I touch? I ended up in the ER that weekend. I was like, something crazy is happening. And they were like, oh, it's UV light. Yeah. So they tested me for all sorts of things because they thought I had, um, autoimmune and lupus and everything else and they were like no you're just you're just allergic to uv um put on some sunscreen and cover up like you have skin cancer and you'll be fine so i have an epi pen for light against the sun that's crazy and yeah. also i feel like i wish it was the red bull that made you allergic because you can get rid of that right i could have drank so many things i should have drank so, so many other things. mixers in the world so many well, mixers. so that happened but what really had her go look is a tiramisu remember that that's what it was it was you know because the, the brandy soap lady fingers it's, or whatever it's it is. amaretto yeah amaretto and it's not it's ridiculous because i for a little while i would try i would be like what is it like what is the thing is it the tannins is it the you know the alcohol it doesn't matter if you cook it it still affects me so it's some sort of enzyme or something that is in liquor even cook port wine cheese makes my tongue swell i was like what is going on yeah so no, no, and she's got anything. none of the perks she can't turn into smoke she can't you know 
any of the fun stuff and she didn't get fangs. I don't know what you were bitten by, but it's not cool. Just not no, a cool. But I could put my hands out. Like if I get my nails done and put my fingers under like the drying thing, you could see they turn red. Like after, you know, cause they, what is it? Like two, three minutes, it turns red, like right up to the line. So that's fun. And then it itches like crazy. And then after about an hour, it goes away. So. So CK, things you wish would never happen to you. I bet we just added two things to the list. There we go. Okay. So for that fun story and many more, listen to Drinking with Authors. Okay. Let's start with what is your favorite book of all time, CK? Uh, okay. I try to think about this and I just need to say that that's like asking me, what is my favorite concert, musician, color, animal, the, like a million things enter my mind. And I think it's about the period of time and the mood I was in. So it's the most complicated question in the world. I will say Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver because I love that book so much. And I actually read it a few times, which is one of the few books I've ever read more than once. But it is a difficult and unfair question because there's so many brilliant books. Well, good then what is your least favorite book? Do we have the same thing there? Or you can name that one off the top of your head. That's like the books I've read recently. Again, it's unfair because Poison One Bio is the first time I read it was years ago, but it still res resonated that I read it again before I went to Africa. But like, I feel like I read a couple of books I didn't like that much. I shouldn't say that, right? That's not correct. You can totally say it. Here's the thing. It's a book that you don't like. Trust me, on this podcast, I've mentioned many books I don't like, some of them repetitively because people bring them up. So... <laughs> You cannot like a book. I mean, that doesn't mean anything because not everybody's going to like every single book. Okay. I was not wild about Rodham by Curtis Sittenfeld. I just finished that a few weeks ago. I skipped through. I love Hillary Clinton, but I did not like that book that much. And I do love Prep and I love all her other stuff. And she's big. So I mind saying this is not going to damage her at all. And I would say also The Goldfinch. Everybody loved that book so much. Yeah. Ooh, I did not like, I read it. And the last one, I will say this, was uh, Nikki and the Six. I read it. I thought it was okay. Uh, I know there's a movie coming out and the world loved it. I didn't like it that much. But these are also very strong writers and they have other books. And, and my saying this is not going to hurt anybody's feelings, I don't think. Okay. Um, what is your favorite book to movie? Hmm. I should know this. Or TV story. show. Like you think they... It went to the bigger little screen and they did a good job. Um, I've been drinking a little bit, so I'm gonna like, okay. So like the issues are like, I always like the book more. So going over to the movie, oh, I would say this divergent. Like people say, oh, you're like a, a teenager. Yeah, well, well I, I tried to read the divergent series and I was not impressed. And I thought the movies were somewhat better, not great. Oh, the book. Oh, are we doing the book is better or the movie is better? The, the movie is better. Uh, the, at this point, the movie's better. I don't even know though, because you just took me on a journey and I'm like, not even sure where we are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I would also say I read all the Twilight books and I thought the movies were better. And I feel like the other direction is hard. Like, was the book, was the movie better than the book? Like, not, that's was hard. it better? Where do you think they did a good job? Like, I think it's very hard to necessarily do better than the book. There are some cases where there, there are, and people have mentioned them on the show and I can't think of any right now, but um, there are some cases where the movie was probably better than the, the book. But in most cases, it's, where do you think they did a good job with it? Where do you think they did the book some justice with how they did it? I would say that one of the ones that blew me out of the water, this is like being a little kid. I read all the Little House on the Prairie books and I love them. Like I was a Laura Ingalls Wilder fan and I know there's issues with it nowadays, but when I was like in elementary school and then whatever happened, I watched the series and I was like, what the hell? This is not the books I was just reading. And I love the series. I love that interpretation of Laura and all the other stuff, but that was not the books. Um, so I think as a little child, I got the zone where like the books are so different than the movies. So I don't think I get as heartbroken or upset about things, but I, I feel like um, there's been some really good ad adaptations, but 
mostly they're they don't the book is way back <laughs> okay okay what about um who what if you could be any lead character or any character from your books who would you be That's from my books? That's hilarious. Because <laughs> people, some of my friends are like, hey, Kate. And then they call me Kate. I'm like, no, no, no. She's nothing like me. I am a high strung type A spaz versing on mean. Uh, in other books? Oh, I don't know. Like, what the heck? Like, I feel like, um, what was the question? <laughs> which character in your book would you be which that's that's hard you're super hard I guess I'd have to be Rex <laughs> right <laughs> that seems I mean, that was an inappropriate response um I would be like no because I just feel like that's too hard. I mean basically there's only four characters that are really developed five by the end of the series well mm. it doesn't mean if they're really developed I mean the fact is you could be anybody you could be the side character of side characters if you know the backstory. It's your book. It's going to be Sinclair's. What? It's his sister in Florida, right? Oh, she's awesome. Charisma. I love her. Okay, I would say charisma. Thank you, Jen. For <laughs> I am charisma. Okay, great, Jen. You're not supposed to be answering the actual questions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, now you get to ask some questions because you got in the way. I got, I got in the way. All right. Do you finish a book if you're not enjoying it? I cheat it. Like if I really don't enjoy it, I'll go and read the end and then I'll start reading the book backwards. So that's unfair. And it's a harshness. Like I will, I am committed. I will read anything, but if, if I'm really bored or I feel like I, I will go backwards. I did that with Rodham. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to beat up on Curtis Settenfeld anymore. Um, do you read paper books or do you read on your phone, digital? Do you have a preference? All of it. I do Kindle, I do paperback, I do library, I do um, Audible, okay. like if I'm driving, you know, like I, I, whatever, whatever, I do them all. If you're reading a paper book, will you like write in it or fold down the pages or do you, you are your books like precious and sacred and you can't mar them? uh no it always kills me at the end of the book I'm like oh I love that line or I love that sentence did I mark it did I mark it and I go back and there'll be like folds I wish I marked up books more like like I feel like the older I get to the more I'm like when I feel like I read something that is, it that touches me or it's very intense I I should I should make a point of acknowledging it more so oh I would mark up a book in a minute but I am big on sharing books me and my friends, like, she'll, that, we bring over bags of books and we're like, oh my God, these were all awesome. And it might take a year or two to like dig through it. Or you can say, no, that's totally her. That's not going to be for me. But I like sharing books as an environmentalist, right? You know, I'm always like, don't throw them away. Don't like share. Mm -hmm. No, I think that if you get done with books, you should take them to local, um, lo uh, not uh, like little free reader libraries or local YMCA's or local um, nursing homes. They love books. Like, do not get rid of your books. But it drives Jen nuts. I like reading my books in like bathtubs and stuff like that. So I always tell people when people have a book and they're like, oh, I'll let you read it. I'm like, I'm just going to let you know the condition that book is going to come back to you in. So you can choose whether or not you're handing it to me because I don't pretend that it's not going to get spine cracked. Like, pages it depends it depends on the book right like there are certain books that are like expensive and pretty and you're like okay that one you don't read in the tub but then other books it's like no just mark all over that thing that's why i have 75 copies of lord of the rings yeah that's true um i had a question it was um art it was about art what's your favorite like art piece piece of art hmm Wow, that is so hard. <coughs> it's crazy too, because my little sister is an, you mean like painting or like other forms of art besides? Yeah, whatever, uh, art. Huh. What pleases your eye will go with, with visual. So difficult. And it's because this is crazy. Like my little sister is an artist. Like, and, and my older sister is an artist in her own way. And I always said, I am not an artist. I am a science. I am not an artist. 
And then when I started writing, I'm like, oh shit, I am an artist. Writing is a di- just a different form of art. Um, and so, yeah, that's like almost, a, I feel like I've been like the snotty person at the Louvre saying, oh, whatever, it's a painting. Because I was programmed to think I'm not the artist. Um, but actually I love painting and I love murals and I love anything with nature, anything that has wildlife or sunsets or water or, you know, reefs. But I know that might not be considered high art. Like I just, I, I love, yeah, I do love art. Cool. That's good. Okay, what is your favorite weird food combination? Okay, this one you're gonna hate. I'm a vegan and I became vegan during the pandemic. That was the other thing. I was always pescatarian, vegetarian. Then during the pandemic, I learned how to cook as well as write. And now I'm full out vegan. And I, so the stuff I did in the past, I'm just like, I was a a scoundrel. Like I would eat like tuna fish with like, Doritos and pickles and smash it all together. That was my favorite food. And also like my favorite hangover food. And now I'm just like, oh, how did I eat that? Um, but my uh, crazy food is, I don't know if that's crazy because I feel like I'm, I was probably not that crazy. But, and then that's the one thing I miss. I miss tuna fish smashed up with like it's got potatoes and potato chips and yeah. Uh, well, I think tuna fish and potatoes you know, I've never had tuna fish and potato chips like that. Um, but Doritos, um, I, we're totally grossing Jen out. You can tell by the look on her face. It's pretty tuna awesome. Tuna fish is not my favorite in general. So <laughs> that's I, my favorite junk food. I'm going to eat tuna with something crazy. What is your favorite casual outfit? Uh, this, my, my awesome, may the forest be with you t-shirt. <laughs> I like it. it. Mixes my love of the environment and my love of Star Wars. Um, like casual of it? Oh, I am also, I work out a lot. So 90% of the time I'm in running clothes or like something. And, and I am also a lobbyist. So I wear suits all the time. I hate suits. I, and now during the pandemic, you only have to be like suited halfway down, which has been so awesome. But now we're back up. We got to go back up to the hill. We got to talk to these people. We got to dress like they dress. Yeah, no, it's definitely, um, I think it's interesting. My favorite were the people not paying attention behind them for mirrors and stuff that were wearing like boxer shorts and stuff on the bottom and the suit jackets. One has to be aware of one's environment when one is dressing like that. What's your favorite writing snack? You're a vegan, what's your favorite writing snack? Pistachios would be number one. Number two would be almonds. Number three would be peanuts. And then if I'm really having some weird intensity would be like crackers. Yeah, I know I'm boring. It's basically salt, right? And they're delicious. The pistachios are the greatest thing that nature has ever created. I'm surprised you didn't say those little seaweed things, you know, little salty seaweed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, Jen's not thrilled. I will let no, you know we that did, Jen- we did a potluck, and my student, one of them, brought in at one point those seaweed, and my students went crazy for it. I was like, "Oh, okay, okay. seaweed bites are a big, a big hit." Well, I, I didn't know that Jen was is eating an uncrustable. I would be eating an uncrustable. That is accurate. Yeah, it is an accurate statement. Very true. Jen oh, eats well, like a middle school person. I would. I do. I I eat well unless Remy feeds me. That's I eat out of a box. Um, what was the last show that you binged? Oh, totally. The, the Last of Us. Like, literally, I think I watched the last episode last night. I, was, I feel like I, I was slow to the game on it, but it was fantastic. That's on HBO. It's like a, it was a video game, and it's the fungus among us, and it's like horrifying and also deep, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you, you mentioned Star Wars. So what's your favorite Star Wars? One, New Hope, blew me out of the water when I was seven. I saw it like a hundred times. My parents treated movie theaters in the seventies like babysitters. So they would give you like your 50 cents and they would just be like, go, I'll pick you up at seven. And I just watched it over and over and over. The whole series, just like, and then I got mad because I was talking to my sister the other day about this. Like all of our boy cousins had the toys, but we were not allowed to buy the toys. Like I didn't like, 
we couldn't afford them, but also we just, it was not, like they had freeing the, the ships and the, and the characters. And yeah, that one just blew me out of the water. I like that you said one, so I'm just going to high five you from a distance because- The first one like, was one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I pretend the other ones don't exist. My boyfriend said that to somebody the other day. They brought up something and they're like, he literally interrupted and went, she doesn't acknowledge the existence of those ones. So you should just move along on this question. <laughs> they're all fine and fun. Oh, shut up, Jen. Seriously. I like all the things. I know you do. You always like I all the things. Appreciate variety. Um, what are you reading right now? Again, with the gloom and doom, but I just finished the Underground Railroad like a week ago and it took a long time because I only read, I have so much going on. I only read like a few minutes before I go to bed as like a treat. And um, by Whitehead, it was super good. And at the same time, I finished a couple of weeks ago, The First Conspiracy, which is about George Washington. I switched back and forth. I read science fiction. Um, the First Conspiracy is not, is not fiction but it's written like fiction. And then, you know, like, like I just try to switch all the time because there's so many freaking awesome books. It's like hard. And also like, you know, with the writing and the working and the life, like reading is a little treat. So um, I, I try to be careful with what I'm like reading. I actually have a, another book by somebody that you guys know in my queue up, which I'm going to start this week. And so like, that'll be my little treat as we go forward. But um, I, before that I read, the Gollum and the Ginny. I know that was a long, that had been out for like years, but I love that book. I read like, so I jump, I like jump around a lot. I'm like what I'm reading, but that was all very recent. Oh, also I read the Crawdads. Where the Crawdads sing? That was probably like six months ago now. I enjoyed the book. I saw the movie, the movie. I like the book better. Okay. I haven't seen the movie. Have you read the book? Mm -hmm. I listened to the book and the person who does the narration on the book is pretty amazing. Like I have to say the narrator totally brings, I don't think I could have read the book if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like because of getting into so much detail about the environment and the creatures and stuff like that takes me way flashbacky to um, the Plains of Passage, which fucking hate that book because all it was was about grass. It was in different kinds of grass and how it affected the cultures around it. <laughs> Fucking grass. I learned how to nap steel from those books. Like I could make an arrowhead. <laughs> okay, you know what? You also think <laughs> not not steel, stone, nap, stone napping. I just said the wrong word. Damn it, Cody. Yeah. And you're not even drinking. I but know. needless to say, I love the clan of the cave bear where um wild horses. What was that? Where the The Valley of the Horses? Valley of the Horses. Yeah. Fucking Plains of Passage can fuck. That book was like this huge. It was like an encyclopedia of fucking grass. But I feel very much where the Crawdads dad saying would have got me down that path had I not been listening to it in the way she told the story, which I think is very interesting because I think some books, and this is just me personally, because now I have more time to do audio books than I do physical books because I use them when I'm, driving or doing chores or like I because you can't do you can't read while you're driving because apparently that's illegal whatever um and uh or chores so uh but I think it it does make a difference on some stories at least for me to listen to the audiobook versus you know the the physical and then sometimes I start listening to the audiobook and I'm like this narrator fucking sucks I can't even listen to this story their voice drives me crazy <laughs> that happens okay go ahead jen you had a question i i do okay so what happens if you have an author that you like um and they put out a new book but they have done or said things that are unpopular can you still support their art without supporting the individual that is like such a modern question right like it's it's everywhere i would just say this too like anytime anyone says do you consider yourself woke i'm always like Ask them to define woke before you commit or freak out or deny, you know, like it's, it's just, the world is changing very quickly. I would say 
like I love Bukowski. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but he was like a writer and like all through what grad school, being. I went on these drinking binges and I would just read Bukowski. And he was so bad and inappropriate and wrong. He's in William Bur- William S. Burroughs category in my brain. Like the two of them are very, and then like Henry Miller's below them, but still like horrible human beings, but fun art. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, there. I mean, he's dead now. So it's like, I'm not having this crisis of like, will I continue reading his books? But it is like, it's, we, we just live in this time, you know, like where it's just like crazy. There's a reckoning about people and their choices that they made. And do, do we celebrate them? Like, that's the thing. It's like, can you just acknowledge their art and what they thought and felt at the time and learn from it? Maybe that's different than celebrating them. Like, I feel like there's this political issues. I don't, it's very complicated, but I would say, yes, there are, I have several writers that I have always liked that I worry were bad guys. But Burkowski was like, like also going through, I mean, he was a sexist pig, whatever. I don't know. Don Lemon is a sexist pig. So it's just like, whoa. It's just, the world is very complicated and yeah. I think there was, uh, you know, we have social media now, which people didn't have back then, you know, newspapers, whatever, newsletters, maybe if they ran into somebody, but um, I think it's a very interesting topic because, (coughs) you know, like we have JK Rowling, who's one of the biggest, you know, shitheads right now when it comes to trans rights and I'm I'm personally saying it that way right and you go back and you look at what Harry Potter meant right in the Harry Potter movies and the Harry Potter stories and what that meant and you also like for me Ender's Game was one of my favorite books growing up it was one of the first books I couldn't put down and I read all the way through right and I was 13 or something like that but Orson Scott Card is uh He's a shitty human being, right? And so I go, okay, what what do you do with that? Because you have this very pleasant memory attached to this experience. And then you have the human that does this thing that's horribly wrong. And I get like, it's supporting them to continue to purchase their art or things around their art. Now, in the case of J.K. Rowling, I don't know how much she actually owns Harry Potter anymore because Universal bought a lot of it. So who knows if she's making money off of that part still or what the deal is or, you know, all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that because I have no fucking idea. But um, I I do think it's really interesting. And and that happens with actors and all sorts of people that do something, proven do something. Can you watch House of Cards? Like knowing what Kevin Spacey did. So that's something that's like proven, right? I don't know if Kevin Spacey was proven anymore because I think he won that court case. Did he? Oh, yeah, right. he won the court case. Sorry. He won one big one, but there's yeah. a second one coming up. So, okay. yeah. but but wait, let me just say too, like I feel like I felt guilty loving Little House on the Prairie books like a long time ago because of the her opinion and her family's opinion about Native Americans, which was. Um, actually interesting and deep because like it's just complicated right like do you hate Laura Ingalls Wilder because she was scared like what like we also learned through her and the tv show was way better like they they made things more politically palatable about her family and I would also add this one about not just um Harry Potter which is a big one but Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And I was obsessed with Joss Whedon and I thought he was a rock star. And then the more you heard about like his relationships with Charisma and Dawn and other characters, but I saw them at Comic-Con a couple of years ago and uh, Charisma and some of the other actresses. And they said, Buffy has become bigger. Buffy is about women empowerment. Buffy is about, it's not just about Joss Whedon being a douchebag. So just love the show, love the comic books. Love, like move forward with the character and don't let Joss Whedon destroy everything for everybody. And I thought that was freaking awesome because it kind of like releases us from like Michael Jackson a little bit and JK Rowling. Like if they're not receiving money for what they like, if it's like, I don't, it's, it's difficult. Like I don't want to make them wealthy for the abuse they did, but at the same time they created amazing things. 
No, I agree with you about the God's Wheaton. I read his biography and stuff like that because I think Buffy was huge about female empowerment, regardless of, and I'm not taking away the behind the scenes stuff and what's been proven and stuff like that, right? But that entire thing changed generations of girls. Like it just did. It brought a female, younger female badass to the scene who was the hero and didn't need a boy to save her like it was one of the few that existed at all you know it's a big difference and you go do you destroy that and the effort and art that other people put into creating that it's kind of like with the jk rowling and then we need to actually ask you a couple more questions that are are fun but the jk rowling what i thought was interesting is they did um what is it a 20-year a, a look back or something like anniversary mm -hmm. and i watched that right and, and she, was not. she was not on it they used tape recorded things because i believe universal went no yeah you're not going anywhere near this like i firmly believe that there's a, a degree of responsibility you have as a celebrity and to be very careful um and i don't want to say regardless of your views because i don't think people should have the views for instance that she has but um you have a responsibility because you created something that a lot of people have invested themselves into and then you do this thing over here that takes away where all of the cast came out and went we don't support what she's saying, but we put X amount of time of our lives into creating these movies and bringing this entertainment and bringing these characters and stuff like that to you. And you don't want to take away from all the effort that all of these amazing people put into creating this art that this other person had. So it's a very weird, like, where do you go topic, I think, it's, and it's hard. You know, and as a fan of Harry Potter, which I very much am a fan of Harry Potter, it's very hard for me because, you know, I probably would junk punch J.K. Rowling if I saw her in person because, like, give me a break, lady. But this other thing. So let's let's go to funner topics right now. <laughs> Not that this isn't important and doesn't need to be addressed, but cake Jen, or pie. Bring it down. Cake or pie? Cake. cake. Ooh, I love cake. I like pie, but I love cake. What's your favorite flavor of cake? Mm -hmm. um, vanilla cake with like a fancy icing. And I like, there's so many good vegan bakeries in DC. Like I have to stay away because they're so divine. And like the more like sugary, yeah, I'm, I love cake. I just don't think pie is sweet enough, though. Usually it's more healthy, right? It's got like fruit and stuff. You in. obviously but I don't love watch a great British baking show because when they do American pies, the first thing they say is how ridiculously sweet the American pies are in relation to stuff they make over there. Too much sugar. Um, yeah. Do you have a favorite pen? Like what's your brand of pen, your go-to? What do you write with? Uh, I am the worst on that. I just finish them and then I throw them. And Jeff's always like, I'm like, you're an environmentalist and you're just burning through these pens and I'm trying to find ones that are refillable and I know I'm awful. And I will even say to him, like, here's your favorite pen and I just destroyed it. So, yeah. And I write, when I am in meetings, especially Hill meetings or boring meetings, I write everything down because that's the only way to keep my attention. Because the minute I start typing, I'll start typing a story or something more interesting to me. So writing to me is like a chore and not a chore, but it keeps me engaged. I write a lot of stuff down. Like even now talking to you guys, I've been writing a bunch of stuff down and I'm like, it's, I just do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so final question, if you could be any fantastical, oh, actually I got a better fantastical question for you. I just thought of it. What color would your lightsaber be? I'm torn between green and blue. I'm torn between the earth and the oceans. So I'm going to go with green. Okay. Okay. Do you see that, Jen? Pulled that one right out. Okay. I like, I like it. Thank you. She was self promotion time, CK. Where can people find you in your books? www.ckwestbrook.com. 
join my newsletter. You can see where I'm coming. I'm going to be in doing two book signings in Florida. I'm going to be at AwesomeCom in DC. I just want people to come out and talk to me. And I also have like Instagram and that's all ckwestbrook.author. And, but the most important thing is the newsletter. Please join my newsletter. It's freaking awesome. You want to see some fantastic pictures and funny jokes and the latest news. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for being on this podcast with us. Thank you. This has been awesome. So much fun. I love this podcast. Thank you. And I'm a little bit drunk. I am literally a little bit drunk. Thank you. That's okay. Me too. That's what this podcast is about. Not Jen though. She's our designated podcaster. So, drink all my tea. <laughs> guys, this has been Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. I have been your host, Erica Lance. My co-host today has been J.M. Paquette. Do not forget to like, subscribe, leave us a review, comments. We'd love to hear from you. Our guest has been C.K. Westbrook, and we will see you next time.